A film really would be nothing without the sound effects that help bring them to life. When on set, most of the sound effects recorded are useless, so the sound artists have to re-record them using Foley, the art of using practical objects to replicate a sound. But sometimes sounds are so out of this world that the designers have to come up with completely new sounds that aren't of this world. More often than not, they end up being iconic. Here's how they did it. Before we get started, be sure to click on those subscribe and notify buttons to stay up to date on everything Screen Rant. <laughs> Ring Wraiths One of the most terrifying creatures to hit the big screen in recent memory, the Ring Wraiths from Lord of the Rings are the stuff of nightmares. Part of what makes the wraiths so scary is their use of fear to hunt their prey. What better to evoke fear than with sound? The high-pitched scream of the wraiths is enough to send shivers up the spine and send anyone running to the hills. It's metallic and is enough to make you super uncomfortable. But when you learn just how they made that piercing scream, it's suddenly not so scary. Initially, he was going to use harbor seals, but the sourcing wasn't working in their favor. When sound designer David Farmer asked what the recording sounded like, he got scraping cups as a response. So Farmer went out to Target and bought some plastic cups and bowls and scraped them together to get the bass sound for the wraiths. From there, it was simply a case of editing that initial recording and turning it into something far more menacing. ATM-6 Walkers in Star Wars The Last Jedi, the Resistance find themselves pinned down on the mineral planet Krayt in the film's climax. Despite having just lost their supermassive Mega Star Destroyer, the First Order seem to be pretty well equipped for the assault. Included in this assault are the new walkers, the AT-M6. Considerably much larger than the AT-ATs from Empire Strikes Back, these lumbering behemoths have a guerrilla stance to make sure those pesky rebels don't use the same harpoon and cable tactic that they did at Hoth. But how did they make the sound effect for these massive walkers? By taking a lion yawning and layering it with the sound of a machinist's metal punch press. The metal press was used to create the original walker sound in Empire by Ben Burtt, and they incorporated that sound effect into the final cut for the ATM-6. Once you know the lion is a dominant sound in the walker's movement, it's actually hard not to hear it. T2's Opening Skull Crush from turning Arnie's T-800 into a hero and using brand new CGI effects that hadn't been seen before, T2 was ahead of its peers. The film opens up with the war in the future and we see the death and decay that's fallen on humankind. A close-up of a skull sends home the fact that, yeah, this future is pretty awful, moments before a Terminator crushes the skull with its robotic foot. Since no skulls were harmed in the making of this film, the sound designers needed to create the sound of a robot breaking bone and make it a powerful opening statement. To get the scene just right, multiple layers had to be incorporated. The wind, for instance, is just the sound of a breeze outside Skywalker Ranch, incorporated with people making whooshing sounds. The sound of the skull breaking comes from a pistachio nut being ground into a metal plate. Sometimes the simpler way is the best way. The T-Rex. The hard bit with creating the sound effect for our beloved T-Rex in Jurassic Park is that it has no real-world counterpart. We have no idea what dinosaurs sounded like. For all we know, the T-Rex may have sported a very cutesy sound. But that wouldn't have made for a good nail-biting sequence. So sound designer Gary Rydstrom had to create his own interpretation of what a Tyrannosaurus would sound like for the blockbuster film. The roar itself was made up of various animals found on Earth today. He slowed down the wail of a baby elephant, a tiger's snarl, and alligator hisses and roars, and when layered together and modulated, gave us what we know as the T-Rex roar today. 
The sound is so iconic that they didn't have to alter it at all for the Jurassic World films, as evident in the trailer for Fallen Kingdom. The breath of the Rex had to be created as well, as it was a prominent sound in the attack scene. When Grant loses his hat to the Rex's breath, we hear a huge burst of air coming from her nostrils. This sound was actually the air coming from a whale's blowhole. When the Rex killed the Gallimimus later on in the film, Rydstrom's own terrier was used for the sound of the hungry Rex digging into dinner. The Giant Boulder in Raiders of the Lost Ark An archaeologist, played by Harrison Ford, Jones goes on daring adventures to make sure evildoers, mainly the German army in the 20s and 30s, don't get their hands on supernatural artifacts that could shift the tide of the war. In the very first film, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Jones finds himself in a tomb in Peru to retrieve a golden idol. Things naturally go downhill as soon as he gets his hands on it, and various traps spring into action that would instantly kill lesser humans. The biggest trap set in the place was a giant round boulder, perfect for rolling over potential thieves. But of course, that's not really a giant boulder. The sound on set wouldn't even come close to what it should sound like. So how did they make it? As it turns out, sound designer Ben Burt used the sound of a Honda Civic rolling over some boulders with no motor sound as the basis for that sound effect. He happened to have a sound gear with him as he was driving, and the natural sound the car made in the environment felt perfect to him. So he got to recording, and the rest is history. The Enterprise's Warp when it came time to reboot the Star Trek franchise, J.J. Abrams wanted the sounds to feel familiar, but at the same time, revamped. Easier said than done, especially with a series as beloved and popular as Star Trek. So he called upon Star Wars sound guru Ben Burtt to bring Star Trek up to date, but ensure that it wouldn't lose its identity in the process. One of the biggest sounds that has to be made for a Star Trek film is the sound of a ship going to warp speeds. So how did Ben Burtt go about reimagining that sound effect? He actually looked to the past. Seeing as Star Trek came from the 60s, he wanted to mimic the musical tone that he had heard in the original effects. He found an old 1960s test oscillator at his old college and duplicated the effect by passing the oscillator through a plate reverb chamber, much like how they did it on the original series and films. With updated technology in the computer side of things, the effect sounded both familiar and new at the same time, pleasing old fans and newcomers alike. The Balrog Orcs may not be a problem for the Fellowship, but when a fierce fire demon from the age of the first Dark Lord comes knocking, Gandalf's order to run seems like a logical step. The Balrog comes straight out of the imagination of J.R.R. Tolkien. There's nothing quite like it on Earth, and the sound it makes when it furiously chases after the Fellowship doesn't sound like anything we can think of on this planet. But you can bet your life savings, the sounds did in fact come from regular everyday objects and animals in our reality. David Farmer, the sound designer on the Lord of the Rings trilogy, started by dragging a cinder block on a wooden floor to get the introductory sound effect for the Balrog. The reason for this was to give the audience the impression that this monster was being unearthed after resting for centuries. For the roar, he turned to donkey and horse sounds to specifically get the sound of rage and pain. Kind of morbid now that we know. Logan's Claws when X-Men hit the big screen way back in 2000, it's likely no one knew just how much of an impact that film would have on the industry. But it all started with X-Men. One of the key players in the film was Hugh Jackman's Wolverine. 
Wolverine's iconic image is often associated with his claws. They're made out of adamantium, one of the super metals found in the Marvel Universe. To make them, sound designer Craig Berkeley and his team layered two primary sound effects. One was the metal itself, which was made by recording a blade coming in and out of a sheath at various speeds and lengths and angles. The other bit was the sound of blades leaving Logan's hands, which was made by stabbing the carcass of turkeys and chickens to get that fleshy sound. Yum! Lightsabers Perhaps the most iconic sound effects ever, it's become ingrained into the pop culture lexicon and known to millions across the world. Even if you've never seen a Star Wars film, you likely know this sound effect based on other movies and shows using the same sound effect. So how do you create the sound of laser swords from a galaxy far, far away? The original saber sounds were created by Ben Burtt over at Skywalker Sound. He took the hum of a film projector and the idle hum of an old TV set and combined them together to get the resting hum noise of the lightsaber. An elegant weapon for the more civilized age. Once the sounds were layered together properly, he passed a shotgun mic over the speaker and created feedback, which in turn created the swinging noises. In the sequel trilogy, we get a new type of lightsaber with its own sound. Kylo Ren sports a crossguard lightsaber that doesn't sound like anything we've heard before. To give it an unstable and mean sound, as it was built by an amateur and was supposed to sound like it could explode at any minute, they used elements from chainsaws, flamethrowers, and Harley Davidson engines to bring his saber to life. Iron Man's Armor With Infinity War just around the corner, many people are excited to see Iron Man and the gang back on the big screen. It's been a long time coming, but we're finally at the third Avengers film. We wouldn't be here without the success of the first Iron Man film. Before Robert Downey Jr. took on the mantle, the comic book character was considered by many to be a B character. Now he's one of the most popular. For Iron Man 3, the sound designers wanted to change things up a bit, as there were many more Iron Man suits and the Iron Patriot in the film. The various metallic sounds of the suits were just that, various metals, but the more unique sounds took some creativity. Mark Stokinger and his team went to Toys R Us and recorded the idle sounds of RC cars in the store before closing hours to get what ended up producing servo sounds that would be used for the Iron Patriot's legs. Other sounds that were recorded were RC-controlled jets in both stationary and flying mode. That's it for now, everyone. What's your favorite classic movie sound effect, and why? Did you know that most of these larger-than-life sounds all had humble beginnings? What sound effect sounds nothing like its original source? Let us know in the comments below, and be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this every day on your playlist. Thanks for watching.